And here we have it, folks. It's a production version of the RC four-wheel drive Miller Motorsports Rock Racer. One of my crew bought it, and we are going to go through it. This is just going to be an unboxing, show you all the details of this fascinating vehicle. There's a lot to be said about this thing, for sure. And we are going to have a couple more videos, a, a full-on running video, and then a modified. So we're going to do a lot with this because I think it deserves it. It's a huge effort from RC four-wheel drive. So here we have it folks, the last RC four-wheel drive vehicle that I reviewed is this. is the Chevy Scottsdale Edition truck and this thing was cool. I think they're really trying hard to innovate and when I first saw this on the spec sheet, I'm like, I actually made a list of the top 10 great releases of 2023 and this was number one, number one, because there's so much going on with it and it's only 500 bucks, 499 and it's just mind blowing because a lot of RC four-wheel drive you know, they're pretty high end. They're always at like 600 and, and, and above. So for this to be 500 bucks for everything that has to offer, it is kind of mind blowing. So to give you guys some size comparisons, this is a, a new one from FMS 124th scale, little baby. And then this is the, the super big 118th scale, look more like 116th. This is the ca actual Capra 118th and you know, rock racers have had a rough life with RC. You know, we had the Rift and then we had the Gatekeeper. Both were pretty awful in terms of uh, performance and drivability. It's a good concept, you know, get, get a kind of a crawler that you can rock bass, rock race. But the problem is, you know, with lock differentials and a lot of power, a lot of speed, they just flip over a lot. It becomes kind of not fun. So this one, you know, I wasn't super, uh, into it in concept, but then when I saw it, I go, okay, they're solving a lot of the problems, which is the, the CG is low, the stance is wide, it has unlocking differentials and a whole bunch of other stuff. All right, so I'll put it on my stand. You see the full extension of the shocks right here. I'll show you guys the details. The most striking thing about this vehicle is the body. The body they nailed. It's such a departure from their other vehicles. I'm not sure they re reused any other parts from there. So the body is awesome. Look at that bumper in the front. Very innovative. Nice lights. Uh, a bunch of light, light buckets, but no LEDs included in this vehicle. The shocks are super long. That's at least 100. 2.2 wheels and this tire is, I don't know, what do you guys think? 5 inch, 5.2 inch. Uh, Lexan panels all around. The battery is right here, really cool. So body clip right here, and then once you have that, uh, the battery box swivels, <laughs> and it's super cool. Lexan's pretty thick, so the battery is in there. 2S or 3S. So <laughs> just looking at the videos and the pictures, I couldn't, Im I couldn't understand where the battery was at. And then when I actually had this vehicle, I had to, I couldn't find it. So very, very stealth. Out of sight, out of mind, right? So there you go. It has a solid axle trailing arm suspension. Uh, so a lot of travel. Check this out. Look at that thing. Uh, and then what they do to control the suspension is they have limiting straps right here. So, so very cool. We have the the monster truck from Losi. We put limiting straps on those because uh, they, they, they kept breaking. Um, it has a stabilizer bar. So stabilizer bar is cool. So addressing some of the flipping over issues, that's cool and it's adjustable, I believe. And then also they have, you know, bottom out protection right here. So this thing is a little shock uh, with some very heavy oil. And at bottom out, it, uh, oh yeah, it really works. It, it kind of triples the amount of force needed to, to get that thing fully compressed. Okay, so nice lights here, probably light buckets. And then fans, a hose right here. You, you got some, uh, some gas chambers right there. Really cool box. And then this thing is an inlet valve for some air, some air induction system going on right there. 
And then the switch, it's a brushless system, 2S or 3S. At 3S, it goes about 15, 16 miles an hour. At 2S, kind of slow, uh, even with a two-speed transmission, so that, that the motor is only 1,200 kV, uh, pretty weak. Um, and then, so the switch is right here, very convenient. And then these are actually mirrors. Oh, huh. Oh, it's probably a double swivel, and that's how the, uh, it's very scale. The interior is awesome. The seats are so cool. Oh, I, I just saw a detail right here. Right here is the ESC. So the ESC, they found a place for it where it, it doesn't look uh, obtrusive, but it's fairly easy to access. And it looks like the ESC on my team associated uh, three cell vehicles. Okay, and then the dashboard, super cool. Nice steering wheel, navigation, the stabilizer bar. As you compress this, the, the other side gets super light. I almost feel like it should be, should be a little stiffer. The shocks are dual spring. So this spring on top is very soft. As soon as you sit it down, it's just gonna compress all the way. And then the lower spring is hard. There doesn't seem to be much oil uh, in this. And I've, I've heard like a couple drops of oil um, only. And I'm not sure why they did that. All right, general description, right? And now we're gonna get to the super fascinating part. So aside from it being super scale, I, I see the money total just adding up. Super scale and uh, licensing and whatnot, and it has a brushless motor. Like I said, I go, man, we're talking a lot of money now. You'd expect this to be 700, 800 bucks. Uh, they went with a new radio. This is, a, this is a six channel system and this car requires five channels because it has a lot going on. So I'm gonna turn it on. This is a Dumbo RC model. They give you double A's for this thing. They have the twister servo right here. This is super exposed, this uh, servo arm. Metal servo horn, which is super cool, but man, you kind of need some kind of protection for that servo. So, not too bad. They had it at 70% uh, dual rate, but, and, but the, I put it to, I just maxed it out and it's not binding yet, but you can see there's a lot of steering right here, and you need that for any kind of crawling. Maybe turn it down when you're rock racing. It's not very fast. Diffs are locked, but there's a lot of play here. Front and rear. I, I see the, the drive shaft twisting. If I hold the drive shaft, still quite a bit of play. All right, so this is your throttle right here. It, has this, it makes this weird noise. But it's not noisy, it's just, just a little high-pitched whine. I like it, the tires are all aligned. The tires are looking kind of scale JD model, is uh, what they say. There's three servos neatly packed here underneath this, uh, this air induction system right there. Now in second gear, I think. Now we're cooking. Now we're cooking with gasoline, right? The acceleration is not rapid. It kind of ramps up. And then the, the braking is... So that, this is kind of a problem, I think. Uh, it defaults to full-on drag brake. And for a rock racer, I don't think you want that. So you, you're going to want to adjust that into no drag brake or maybe 25% drag brake. Okay, all right, more tricks, more tricks for you guys. This is your four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive switch. Boom. And now we're talking. Two-wheel drive. So one more switch for you guys. Oh, I see it. Is locking, unlocking this. So it, it locks and unlocks them both at the same time. Ooh, and it's very, very free moving right here. And that, that right there is the magic. You know, you know when I said, oh man, old, uh, old rock racers, they don't really perform. They're, not even, they're either too slow, they're, they're not fast enough, uh, and they flip over a lot. So this is what this model kind of brings to the table is they said, all right, We'll put some technology in. And that's why it's so shocking to me that it's only 500 and it's got all that tech.
Uh, so they, they, they lower the vehicle, dual stage springs, it has uh, stabilizer bars, it has limiting springs, it has bottom out control, and then now it has uh, two wheel drive, so it's harder to flip it on two wheel drive mode, make it spin out, and now it has unlocking diffs and two speed, so, and brushless motor. So there's a lot going on, right? So crazy. What do I wanna do? So I wanna put it on low speed. Ooh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I see some modulation. So this is an uncensored 1200 kV motor. Okay. And I'm feeling um, play in the drivetrain. So this is a little bit of cogging. So this is the play. So this is nothing for a basher, but for, uh, for, for crawling, this will affect you because this is how much time it takes to accelerate and how much time it takes to break. So if you're hanging on a rock, this will affect you. Articulation, pretty darn good. Pretty darn good on the articulation ramp right there. Uh, wheelbase, I think, is close to 14 inches. It's a fascinating model. People will buy this at 700. At 500, in one day, in a few hours, it was sold out at A Main. It went on stock uh, last week. And then at the RC4 wheel drive store, sold out instantly as well. So back order it if it's something you're interested in. As far as pros and cons, I would say, you know, so many, everything I said so far is a pro. It's just mind blowing what they've achieved here. On the con side, the, the suspension is too soft and what you need, you need some oil. You need some heavy oil to, to get this under control. I think this is gonna flip, flip, flip around a lot. Um, and I'm not sure why they didn't ship it with that. The settings, stock settings need to be, uh, you know, get, get all that steering initially. Also get rid of that drag brake, you know, not, not 100%, that's, that's, that's too much. It's just gonna cost, cost it to flip and whatnot. And then uh, this servo is super exposed. Oh man, <laughs> if, you, if you're rock racing, you're gonna nail that instantly. So somehow you need some kind of, some guard, some shield. If they had this plastic thing, like down here, that would be pretty cool. Um, and then the, it's not easy to work on. It's not easy to work on. You know, I've seen people, uh, expose the panels and whatnot, or, or the motor. Oh, the motor. Dude, you gotta take this off. The, in the pros segment, the motor is just amazing. It's amazing looking. It's too bad you can't see it. Um, but like I said, it's not easy to work on. Um, you know, like most rock racers, cage style bodies, uh, the, it's a skeleton that's integrated uh, in, in the whole system. So there you go, a first look. Uh, I'm gonna give you a little spin in the garage floor, but we're gonna do a lot with this this system because it looks like it has so much potential, so much potential. Different motor, 4S, mm -hmm. um, shocks, shock uh, shock tuning, shock upgrade. So that's that's my honest take on it, guys. Uh, but still, fascinating vehicle. So much going on for 499. Thanks a ton. Jump. 
wrong, huh? Oh! <laughs> You'll flip it. So... That's pretty good. That's pretty tight guy right there. Wow. Those tires could use dual stages. Yeah, yeah, it's holding over. Yeah, so you can just put some pro line dual stage. Or, or anything harder. I already have the high rise. Yeah, but it's, it's kind of... Oh, you, you just got the hang of that. And then... Oh. Wow, that thing is smooth going down. Probably go there. Boy, dude, yeah. Going this way. This more. Wow, dude, that looks good. Oh! That's letting off. Oh, I see. So you have to pull the water. Yeah, don't go there. Yeah. It's better than the bomber. Really? Because yeah, 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 yeah. the bomber, you can do this. Yeah. <laughs> that's right, huh? Yeah. 